Hey everyone, welcome to Automation. So I gotta warn you right out of the gate here today that I'm a little sick. Uh, that's why I haven't put out any videos this week as I had previously intended to. But I can talk at least a little bit and in short bursts. I kind of lost my voice there for a bit and I was worried. Thankfully, it's back so it's time for some automation. So the plan today is to make a new car. Ooh, it's totally, <laughs> totally different than usual, I know. But this time it's actually going to be good. Uh, and I don't even know what it's going to be yet. Yeah, the, the planning stages are a little bit off here. Because to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to be making a video today uh, because yesterday my voice was still pretty hoarse and I figured that it probably wouldn't be great to talk to you for half an hour and uh, mess up your ears. So I figured uh, I would just not do anything. But today I'm feeling a lot better, so you know what? Let's do it anyways. I'm thinking, I don't know, it's summertime now, it's kind of hot, let's make a convertible. I don't know why, but I'm just in the mood today to make some like wide body stuff. So I'm going to go with this 2006 coupe and we'll see where we can take it. This thing is long and low and that is going to be perfect for this scenario. I'm thinking what I'm going to try to do is make it a wide body. We'll see how well that goes, uh, but for now I'm just going to start working and we'll see what happens. This is not going to be realistic. I'm just going to go race car stuff. So let's make that a carbon chassis. This thing has to be rear engined apparently or mid, but there's a lot of hood here. So I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, no passengers for us. We're going mid longitudinal, which is going to be awkward. Uh, let me see actually what that can let us do in terms of drivetrain. I was hoping to do at least a rear wheel drive, maybe all I feel like this project could use some turbos, so I'm going to go inline 6, magnesium inline 6, and apparently it's going to have to be a tiny one if we want it in there. Okay, apparently inline 6 is just one too many cylinders too long because we can fit a 5 liter V10, or if we went inline 6, it would have to be probably 2.5 liters, maybe 2.6. Yeah, so obviously we're going V10. I'm absolutely terrible at making these kinds of engines, but I'm going to try and do a, uh, a really high RPM V10 with two turbos on it. Actually, you know what? Let's go to more, two, more than two turbos. Let's just max out whatever we can do here. This is the biggest size we can get. It's 4.1 liters approximately, so that's pretty good. Uh, we need something that can rev really darn high, so I'm actually going to go dual overhead cam, and uh, I guess we can go four valves. We could go five. Ah, four for now, we'll come back to it. Like 80% of the time that I say, I'll come back to this, I don't. And then the other 20% I do, and then I don't show you in the final edit. So yeah, apologies in advance. Okay, let's go balance shafts, um, just to give it a little bit more balance at the RPM that we want it at. May have to change that, who knows? Billet steel, lightweight, lightweight. We'll see how this goes. VVT and VVL, very modern engine and we'll come back to all this stuff later. This is the important stuff. We got two turbos. Unfortunately, we can't do four yet. So sad, but we can do stuff like Smart Boost, which is really cool. Have this way up here because this is gonna make a decent amount of power. And uh, yeah, variable, variable geometry, ball bearing turbos. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. But obviously first we need to pick our fuel system. Uh, just the best of the best type of stuff here. And then uh, ultimate fuel as well. That is a ripper of an intake. I'm very excited to see where this engine will go. Time to slap some exhaust on it and ooh. Yeah, that's normal V10 stuff, nothing too crazy, but it still looks pretty darn good. Mufflers are for babies and the state of California, so we're not gonna have any of those. Uh, so instead, <laughs> let me just take a look at what we're working with so far here. It makes 496.9 horsepower, which is not horrible. Uh, you can see under here uh, the power and torque if the car was NA. So <laughs> our torque number is going insane around the 2200 RPM range just because of the turbos. It's like boom. And then we have massive torque all the way through the curve. And then it kind of just dies off. But <laughs> turbos make a difference when they're well tuned. And right now they are not tuned at all. So let's just put them on a race intake and uh, the thing is destroying itself. Perfect. Obviously it's not getting anywhere near enough fuel, so uh, I'm just going to put that way up and then do that again and see what happens. 794 horsepower, but we have a lot more rev range to go. This thing it can rev and I want it to rev, <laughs> so let's turn that up to 7800 RPM, not bad. We could theoretically get up to 
um, well, that, that's a lot of torque and a lot of power, but we could theoretically go up to almost uh, full <laughs> 12,000 RPM based on these readings here. I think we'd start braking at 11.6, so let's aim for that. So you can see valve float has become a bit of a problem, but we can do this to get rid of that. So just the hardest possible springs and lifters that we can get in order to mitigate that issue. So one of the things with engine tuning, and I'm absolutely horrible at engine tuning, by the time this engine is finished, it's going to be a train wreck. But uh, if we have the VVL profile really high, it just means that our uh, power peak is going to be higher. So <laughs> I'm turning it up just a little bit, see where we can get to. It seems about here it's happy at 860. That's a lot of power. I'm actually just going to go straight for uh, dev meth, which is methanol, because our octane was probably going to be causing issues. So we may as well just crank that up. One of the things I forgot about was quality. Like, why don't why don't I just turn that up too? Come on now. <laughs> Everything all the way up. Let's go. It's been a long time since I just made a car without any restrictions, so cranking everything up is uh, is going to make this even more fun. Let's see what the turbos do with a quick race preset. 1,000 horsepower. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Let me turn up that quality. Okay, 1,027. I think we can do better than that. This is a big engine, so yeah, there's definitely more in it. The important part of this, by the way, is that it rocks it out at 10,500 RPM. Because we have turbos, obviously this is a peak of ridiculous turbo lag. Incredible turbo lag all the way up to 3,000 RPM. That's basically where we actually start to make any power at all. After that, though, once the turbos spool up, it's just boom, and then we meet around here. And then our torque drops off majorly as the power sort of plateaus. It's not amazing, but it's not horrible either. You know what I forgot to do was increase the size of the exhaust. I'm a complete idiot. Uh, <laughs> turning this up most of the way, you know what, let's just turn it up all the way. And then the quality of it up all the way. We are managing 1,278 horsepower. Yikes. If you want to see the turbo charts, by the way, this is what it looks like. Uh, somebody explained to me how to read these before, and uh, apologies in advance because I completely forgot. So... Yeah, there, this graph over here, we want to be in the green. We're stopping somewhere over here in the yellow. I'm guessing that our compressor is probably not perfect because I'm literally just using this to, to make it happen. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to go through the entire engine, try to get a little bit more power out of it, and I'll show you what I can do. Okay, so I want to show you something, and uh, this is why it's important to not just trust a preset in this game whenever you're making something. Boost is sitting at a cool 21 PSI. I've already gone through the rest of these. Um, looking at the turbo graph, we're sort of in the middle here. I, again, I don't know what part of this line needs to be there, but we're at 1400 horsepower, uh, basically 1080 torque, uh, newton meters that is. Look at what happens when I turn up the boost. The, the torque and the power just go way, way up until we get to the point where the temperature of the turbine has exceeded safe limits. <laughs> and uh, I'm basically destroying it as I go forwards. But it just makes so much power that uh, it's, it's a little bit scary. <laughs> but it's pretty darn awesome. I'm curious. Well, okay, you can see that it blows up there, but... Uh, basically, if we avoid that error, we go up to 1935.4 horsepower. That is like a 500 horsepower differential there, just by turning up the boost, so yikes. Alright, so my 4 liter high revving massive turbo uh, V10 is ready to go, and this thing is going to sit longitudinally in this bad boy, so she pretty big. Um, it makes 1,935 horsepower. I think this thing may be a little bit too quick, uh, but there's only really one way to find out, and that is to actually put it in the car. <laughs> Rear-wheel drive is going to mean immediate death, so traction control is going to be on this car for sure. All right, there it is. The engine is entirely painted black. Ignore that trim thing. It's glitched. Uh, it probably doesn't exist on this design, and that's why it doesn't work or something, but yeah, our, our engine has been murdered out, and it's going to murder the driver as well. Also, what is this thing randomly floating in space here? <laughs> that's a good luck charm, okay? Good luck charm. Also, that glitch, too. So some time has passed, and uh, it's been a while. <laughs> Let's make a car out of this ridiculous engine setup. Uh, so first thing we're going to need to do is morph this into the position that we want it. I'm making it longer. I realize that's probably a mistake. Uh, and then 
I want that lower. I don't know about the rest of it. We'll have to come back to it. But again, I want to give this kind of a wicked body kit. And I'm hoping that it actually turns out decent. Everything else about this car is looking pretty sweet though. So yeah, can't, <laughs> can't complain too much. One cool option we have in the morphing is uh, kind of making the trunk how we want it to look. And up is an option, so I'm going to do that. It's basically just straight up flat, and I'm kind of in love with it. Uh, what we got to do, though, in order to get rid of this back glass might be a little bit complicated. It's time to color the car. Now, to be fully honest with you about cars on YouTube, it's, it's a lot easier to get attention on a thumbnail if the car is, like, bright, brightly colored. Uh, specifically if it's just like hot pink or fuchsia or something it's like boom people are gonna see it I'm going jet black <laughs> countercultural today boys uh, but jet black just is gonna look really really good with this setup I think we're gonna go black and sort of a gray combo we'll see what that looks like I know a lot of people like low shine paint I tend to be more in the shiny camp so uh, I'm gonna go with that now a great debate in my mind is whether or not to give this a chrome finish around some of these uh, accent pieces but man it's very tempting to just go okay grill paint is going to make it look worse but I could just go for like carbon or something that's also really cool it's going to look pretty funky up close and maybe in beam ng too but it's just nice and the underbody is going to be dark colored as well just because it kind of blends everything in all right that's pretty ridiculous I think that's probably going to be good uh, so one of the things that I want to do, because obviously this car is meant to be a convertible, uh, is make the roof something different. Uh, so I'm going to make my own little transparent paint. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I kind of figured that this would be awkward. <laughs> I wanted to try and make this car so that the windows are down, um, but I'm not sure that this is going to work fully here. Yeah, we'll have to make some compromises. I'm going to have to figure out how to cut that window out. But if I can't do it, we can obviously just put the roof back on and make it something different. All right, our jet black, really interesting looking vehicle is ready to go. Now, uh, one thing I want to do is put the engine in there real quick. We do have an all-wheel drive option. Thank God, let's put that in. Uh, that is going to be extremely necessary. <laughs> I'm going to make it a dual clutch just because I feel like that's fairly modern. And uh, auto manual is now an option, which is very strange. I don't think I've ever seen a car that's auto manual before. At least not using that terminology. If that's uh, something I don't know, I guess I wouldn't be that surprised. As you can probably tell, the engine is in the back of the car, so most of the power should be going to the back. That's where all the weight is going to be. And, oh goodness, the <laughs> that's not good for the passengers there. They are the cooling. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to make a new setup for it, because that is not going to work. I mean, the good news is we can hide and adjust this as we need to, but... That is really funny. Uh, <laughs> and the turbos, this the placement isn't actually that bad, so we might be able to work with this. Okay, so I semi-secretly went through the entire car and made a whole bunch of adjustments. Uh, basically, just setting it up with the suspension and all that kind of stuff just to give us a little bit of a place to work from. But this is sort of the level I'm working with here. Uh, but it's time that we started doing fixtures, which is arguably the most important part of these vehicles. And the place where I have the most chance of absolutely screwing it up. So let's see what I can do here. First thing we got to do is hide this back window. Second thing is probably fix all that junk. Uh, good news is that we have this. Uh, so we can hide the intake. Um, <clears throat> and that's going to hide the turbo intakes as well. So we can kind of just get rid of that. I would like to keep the engine. And I would like to keep the chassis as well. So uh, yeah, we'll have to come back to that. We could just make the windows 100% transparent. I think that's kind of lame. I'm just going to go for a little bit transparent. We'll see what that does. But the important bit in this is we can move the engine around as we see fit. So uh, if it's sticking too far forwards, obviously I can move it. Uh, okay, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I can move it forwards and backwards if I want to. Like in this case, I'm actually going to keep the intake and just move the engine uh, that way a little bit. So it's gonna be a really jank like Lamborghini style setup where the, the axle actually goes through the block, <laughs> but don't worry about it, it's, uh, it's fiction, okay? I'm making this up as I go. Huzzah, I've managed to erase the window in the back. That's good news. Uh, it was not 
particularly difficult. Basically, there's a little fixture that you can use, these cutouts here, and uh, yeah, it looks like this now. <laughs> so it's just there. I'm going to lock it, though. All right, so that's gone and over with. Next thing to do in terms of the car is actually just going to be to give it the wide body that I want to give it, uh, because I think that's going to be important <laughs> and also fun. So the idea here basically is to take the rounded edges of this car and then absolutely ruin them and turn them into something that is not round in the slightest because it's a full-on blocky race car. That's what I want to do today. This might take a long time, but I really want to make something, so let's do it. So to give you an idea of the kind of width that we're looking at here, I've uh, placed the front <laughs> in the way that I want it, and she wide. Holy. I don't know how I'm going to ape this on the back. This is going to be tough, but... It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm drawing inspiration from silhouette cars, uh, but I'm making this my own design, so we'll see where it ends up. So because automation is a cool game, and uh, <laughs> one of the things we can do is make the wheel offset just ridiculous, and I know that it looks like it only goes up to 49 or whatever, you can just type in whatever you want. I meant to type in 100 there, uh, and it'll just keep, just keep going. <laughs> 150, ooh. That is looking fresh. That is wide. 165 maybe. Perfect. <laughs> just a little bit of wheel out there. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel it in just a touch. So that's the kind of level that we're looking at for uh, wide body. Uh, the wheels are split very far away from the rest of everything, but I'm going to make them all much, much wider. This car is all-wheel drive, uh, so front grip... I mean, it's normally a good thing, but it's it's a good thing here, too. All right, so I think I'm going to go with these headlights, but one thing I got to do before I slap them in there, obviously, is make something unique of them, because at the moment, they look kind of crap. <laughs> but that's where the fun part of this comes in, because, yeah, we got options. One of the things that you can do to make your headlights look a lot cooler in this game is, uh, well, first of all, we need to make the lens, not this. Gray is not working. The lens on this one is this uh, specific thing here. We could actually just black out the lights, which would be kind of cool, actually. Could just make them a carbon insert. You know what? <laughs> well, I might have just fixed it right there. Just put a carbon insert in instead. Perfect. Okay, so the lights that I'm using basically only glow if you have it at... Uh, oh, goodness. If you have the brightness at minimum 100, they'll actually glow. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much impossible to see them. So <laughs> subtlety is, uh, is what we're going for here. This is going to be a very unique car. Uh, <laughs> it already is. Look at the thing. Cancel that. I got an even cooler idea. Uh, why not make these transparent, make the carbon all on the inside, and make them glow like that? That's really darn cool. So I think I'm going to keep those, even though they're a little bit weird. And uh, yeah, that'll be that. And it's even got indicators. Ooh. <laughs> oh man, this car is turning out better than I thought. Honestly, this thing is so cool. I might have to delay this video because it's taking too long to make. <laughs> Worth it. Okay, I'm going to extend these all the way to the front because otherwise it just looks awkward. But man, that is uh, a very, very cool little concept that I keep running into the tapestry. I'm honestly starting to see this car as more of an experiment than anything else because I'm trying things that I haven't tried before and I am having fun doing it. So we may as well just kind of mess around and do some cool stuff because you know what? I don't see why not. <laughs> I have this game. I have the opportunity to play it. We may as well just make some nasty goodness. Now sometimes that could mean stuff that is absolutely horrible like what I'm about to do and also it can mean some things that are incidentally genius that uh, I hope to do, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> With me, it could be either, or both, or somewhere in between. I think usually it's somewhere in between. I'm going to skip mirrors, and I might skip door handles too, because we still have to do the rest of the wide body and the interior. Um, <laughs> I cut off these arches here because I didn't really like the flat bar look that was going on with it. I really dig this front end. I think it's really an interesting little setup, but 
other than that, uh, we have some work to do. Now, one of the things I was thinking about is just cutting out this wheel arch entirely, at least trying my best to do so. And uh, let me see, what do I have for that? I can almost cut out some of the arch. It's a little bit difficult to do anything with the wheel liner there. I guess we could get rid of the wheel liner in the settings here. Maybe I can hide the, not the chassis, the, the basic chassis, I don't know, somewhere in here. I do want to have a ride height similar to this, uh, where the car is essentially scraping on the ground, so I guess that's probably gonna work. <laughs> that cutout may fit just how I need it to. Should we just do the same thing on the back and just have the wide body kit be open? I kind of don't see why not, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have been using this, by the way. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not totally ignoring the advanced options that are given to me. I'm trying to make use of them, but, you know, <laughs> I'm a little too old school. I still remember when we didn't have any of this stuff. Admittedly, that was not very long ago. <laughs> I'm making it sound like it was the 50s. It's like, oh yeah, man, back in my day, we didn't have 3D fixtures. <laughs> we just had to make things with our bare hands, 2D only. Oh, those were the days. That cutout is really jank. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, fill it in a little bit <laughs> just because that's probably too much but the way to fill it in is essentially we're just gonna put a uh, <laughs> cover over top of it because thankfully those actually do exist here how good are they I'm not sure but <laughs> we'll give it a shot okay bad news that's not gonna work but that's okay uh, we'll just leave some jank cutouts and uh, just call it part of the charm of the body kit there you go uh, just let me make sure to duplicate that this thing is already pretty wicked and I'm not quite done with it. We gotta cut out the back and give it some more weirdness. Oh, that's so strange, <laughs> but the exhaust is huge and also carbon fiber. And uh, you can see that the cutout actually cuts through the rest of this now, which is kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> I might even not need the top one. Let me see. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm actually gonna go with that. That's uh, pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna do something that I probably shouldn't do. Let's put a huge exhaust on this uh, because, because, because it just has to. That is ridiculously cool. <laughs> so the exhaust comes up from the engine and then just deposits itself right into the uh, exhaust pipes that I have set up here. They stick out a little bit, but man oh man, that is a wicked tube looking rear end. I have this big piece here that I might reconsider um, and might just put it behind the wheels instead. Or we could just have nothing out the back. That could be even cooler. Just just straight up nothing. <laughs> just wheels and then the cutouts. That's actually kind of <laughs> That's really cool actually. Hold on a minute. Yeah, that is absolutely ridiculous and I love every single second of it. Having that cutout at the back just adds a huge new dimension to this car. So let me go ahead and make some wicked taillights and then we'll get on to the interior and uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe take this thing up for a spin and beam NG. Oh goodness, there it is. Those are the taillights in their full glory. That is kind of, kind of crazy actually. I don't know if I like the width of them, maybe bring them in a touch, but that's pretty wild. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to have any license plate or anything like that. The car has no door handles. It has no fuel cap. It has no mirrors. Uh, it's not going to have a license plate. It's not going to have any radio antennas or anything like that. It doesn't need them because uh, this is a wide body ridiculousness car. And uh, I figure that it's probably fine on its own. Now, I was going to make the taillights really tiny, but uh, I figure having them be a bit bigger is actually better. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't have one be a taillight and one be a brake light. It's, uh, yeah, we're also not going to have any reversing lights either or running lights. They're just going to be taillights. So <laughs> you get what you pay for. And this thing's probably $20 million. Yeah, the front is pretty darn cool. The back is pretty ridiculous. I'm excited to see this car spit some fire. And uh, yeah, let's make an interior. So seeing as this car is kind of uh, nuts, I'm going to do the... Uh, interior that looks like this. <laughs> it's kind of floating in midair, but that's where this part comes in. Let's see if we can't just turn it around. I think this is probably the best interior for this car that's just sort of pre-made, uh, just because it's 
huge uh, and it will also be very modern I think having that in there just something like that is probably good funnily enough this is actually the same interior that the magnum opus has uh, which is a little bit of a fun fact for you there but that's just because I got lazy and the entire interior is going to be carbon fiber because uh, that's all I can do with this. It only has three colorable areas, which kind of sucks, but what, you get what you get when you go for the easy stuff. So, yeah, I can't complain. It looks like it's going to work out decently. Let's put some big seats in there, though. That looks pretty reasonable, actually. I think we've got our seats sorted. Obviously, they can't be this hideous brown, but uh, carbon fiber, <laughs> because everything is going to be carbon fiber in this car. So there we go, carbon fiber partial interior finished. We need an engine cover, I have a few ideas for it, but uh, the first thing is going to be maybe an attempt at putting one of these pieces in to cover up at least part of it. Right, so I made a really cheesy uh, <laughs> engine viewing platform, which is kind of fun. So basically these are just covers that pop out so you can kind of see what's going on um, and then there's a big glass panel that covers up the engine and then we'll just pretend that the roof is not actually there <laughs> because yeah it's not but who knows where it's actually stored and maybe this thing just didn't come with a roof it's some kind of weird Bentley that just never has a roof overall I think the design is finally done it's been two hours my voice is almost gone let's finish this before I actually lose it Honestly, other than coming up with a name for your car, I think the design is the hardest but also the most rewarding part of it. And this thing it looks pretty good. I want to see it quickly in the photo scene so we can actually see the full extent of the light work that I put on it. Um, but obviously, <laughs> there's a lot more that could be done. Turning this up to 100 just gives us the ability to see what I've made. Let me just quickly switch a level though. There we go, dark mirror with the lights on and... Uh, yeah, pretty cool. I decided to make the tops of these lights too, but apparently that's not working, so not a big deal. Uh, and then the tail lights, nice little red glow there. Very, very interesting looking vehicle. Super wide. I love that the wheels stick out. Not really practical in, in real life because you'd be shooting rocks literally everywhere, but in the game it's fun and uh, yeah, I'm happy to make it. So let's finish the thing off. Okay, so I just ran through all this stuff quickly when I was originally doing this, but it's an all-wheel drive dual clutch 7-speed with a possible speed limit of 562. We'll see if that's even realistic. Actually, I have the graphs finished, so I guess we can see. Love that wheel spin in pretty much every possible category, and the power distribution was almost exact, which is excellent, so I'm not doing too badly. So our actual top speed is going to be around 556 kilometers an hour. That's pretty ridiculously quick. I've increased the gearing here, which means our wheel spin should be lower. Uh, but it's turning out that uh, the chosen power distribution seems ineffective. Except it's pretty much exactly where the game would want it, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, it wants it further to the back, uh, which is maybe to be unexpected, but at the same time, I mean, it's a rear engine car, so <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Yeah, literally one tick this way, and that makes total sense to the game now, so I'm going to go 30-70, most of the, uh, well, it's going to be driven pretty heavy on the rear, so that's fine. That's not bad, actually, for a start, uh, the wheels being 375 and 23-inch uh, <laughs> rims, uh, they're huge, but that's going to be pretty decent. Um, it would be better if I shrank the fronts and uh, it looks like it is indeed getting better as I do this. Maybe we can have tinier front wheels, who knows? I don't want them to be too small. Alright, fine game, 99.6. <laughs> so our front wheels don't look much smaller, but they are. Just, just, uh, just enough to be slightly noticeable, but not enough to uh, stick out too, too much. So yeah, still good. <laughs> still wild, just slightly less front wheel. I'm shocked that these rims, even with the small tire, is uh, actually enough to take the weight of this. It, it's made out of all carbon, so it's probably quite light. Um, one of the things I did by the, with the rims, by the way, is I sunk them in deeper, just using the advanced settings. So if you, if you pick these rims and they don't look like this, then that's why. So braking, uh, car is terminally into oversteer territory, that's great. Front and rear dampers are hard, brakes are suffering from brake fade. 
Um, they're huge. <laughs> What's going on here? They're disappearing. When I put this on there, the line is gone. And now it's back again. Strange. I'm going full race pads. I think that'll probably help. And I'm just going to keep everything here maximum size. So it's just going to have these huge, huge breaks hiding in behind all this uh, stuff that's back here. Can I even see them? <laughs> Not really that easily. We got a race diffuser and uh, just a little bit of everything here. Just enough cooling airflow to meet the required cooling. No need to mess with that. I've got a hidden automatic soft top, but honestly, I don't know if it matters. We're going for that. Uh, let's go sport interior just to lighten it a little bit and that to lighten a little bit as well. So a higher interior quality, less weight, probably a good thing. All this is fine. I put advanced 20 safety on it. I mean, we could just have none, but whatever. <laughs> Optimize weight, completely lighter. And we have a little bit more weight distribution sent to the back because again, this car is just wickedly heavy in the rear. So th this is probably not gonna drive very well uh, just as a heads up, but that's all right. Right, I got it to 100% sportiness just with a quick tune. And uh, other than that, I don't care. That's really good corning, 1.26G. Uh, this thing is going to be a difficult car to drive in BMNG, but let's take it in there anyways and see how it does. Oh yeah, here's what it looks like in more plain light, by the way. You can kind of see all my problems underneath that I've chosen to ignore. <laughs> other than that, though, bit of a ripper. Boys, I gotta tell you something. One is that this uh, video is taking a long time to make, and two is that this thing rips real hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, probably a little bit too hard. So the lighting didn't quite come in as I would have hoped it would, but this is BeamNG, so who knows. And also, I don't remember making that chrome piece that small, so I must have messed it up at some point and shrunk it. However, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, the car itself translated into BeamNG relatively well, at least in terms of aesthetic, but how does it drive? This is literally the first time I've taken off with it, and oh my goodness, it is lightning quick. <laughs> so much grip, too. Uh, probably a little bit too much. Um, wow. Uh, it turns out turbo V10s are a little bit OP because that is a very serious <laughs> 0 to 400 time there, my goodness. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to let it go and see how far we can get. So we just hit 7th gear and we're doing 526 kilometers an hour airspeed. That is ridiculous. <laughs> very, very fast, especially for something like this. It doesn't weigh as little as it could. I feel like I could put more speed into this if I really wanted to. And the brakes are actually not terrible. I mean, I'm, I'm on them all the way from 500 something kilometers an hour. You're probably going to hit that person that you would have if uh, <laughs> if you were going to glide into somebody there, but you know what? Not bad. Uh, sport mode, it's, uh, it's even quicker. <laughs> so the interior carbon fibers have come out green, which is really awkward, but uh, other than that, I mean, <laughs> everything else looks relatively decent. I'm kind of a fan of this open wheel-ish aesthetic. On the front, I think it works a little bit better than it does on the back. And the wide body itself is a little bit a little bit too geometrical, maybe. <laughs> it needs some more vertices if we're going to see some some uh, proper wide body stuff. But yeah, I'm uh, starting to lose it here. So <laughs> this is one of those ones that I know you as a community can do better. So if you like this idea, feel free to, to take it on and try it yourself. Make your own version of this car and then tell me how it went. Um, and I'm, I've got to keep talking so we can hit the pyramid at full speed. 516, that's okay. Probably death. I, I would assume that at this point this is going to die, but obviously we're going to have to see it in slow motion. Come on, thing. And not quite. And oh, there goes the engine completely out of it. <laughs> Boy, am I glad that all-wheel drive is working. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, no, the engine is totally separated from the chassis. And for our last drive mode, let's try it without ESC and see what happens. I'm going to rev up to 12,000 RPM and then gun it in S1. <laughs> okay, it's, it's just wheel spin all the time. I, I should have expected that. 
You know, the chassis is actually really darn strong. It's probably too strong, realistically speaking, but it doesn't really matter. This car is a bit of a beast. Alright, let's see what it'll do on the drags trip. I'm not actually going to run it on the drags, but I just wanted to see if it would wheel spin. And it does, but uh, <laughs> we get up to over 300 kilometers an hour at the end. That is nuts. Okay, I'm going to actually try it on the drags. So I'm going to attempt a drag race, uh, and the opponent is going to be me. They're probably going to absolutely thrash me, which is fine, but uh, you know. <laughs> we got to give it a try. Um, I wonder if there's anything that could even potentially come close to this car, honestly. It's just a little bit too nuts. But, stage ourselves here. Lining the front wheels very lightly. Revving. If they can align their wheels, that would be great. Oh, I'm late on the gas, but this is going to be a wicked run. Oh my goodness, the sport mode too. That's 7 seconds? 7.5? <laughs> oh, yikes, that's fast. I'm going to retry that against the new car in its drag sequential form. I want to see what that'll do. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to get my butt beaten here, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. Run up to the line, right on target, and... Oh! Apparently not. <laughs> that start in this is so wicked. Oh man, 7.4. <laughs> Yikes. I think we've made a ridiculous drag car here. <laughs> One more time with somebody different. Alright, you know I had to do it to him. It's the drag version of the uh, old time car. I forgot what it is actually called. Um, but I feel like this is probably my chance to make something decent it might have a good run on me oh it does it's fast but it's not gonna be enough <laughs> this car is just too ridiculous 7.2 that time 8.8 8. oh man that's rough <laughs> oh this is too good you know i'm having too much fun ripping people apart with this car i challenge you to make something faster beat me at that 7.2. I just keep getting better and better. <laughs> but obviously I'm using a uh, sequential, so or a dual clutch actually. Uh, a little bit of cheating perhaps, but it is the fastest way. I mean, the automatic transmission shifts faster than I could. But yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm having a good time with this car. I think it's worthy of uh, its title as the, the widest of boys. I figure that it's probably going to be one of my better design cars this year. However, what I want to do next week is a little bit of an iterative piece. Uh, I'm going to put this engine in something completely different and then we're going to see how it performs. Literally the same engine in something different. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see how that goes. But for now guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. And if you made it this far, comment something down below. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. You know what? Just, just comment your favorite car in the comments. And uh, I'll definitely be looking out for those. For me personally, it's still the R33 GTR. But I'm also very partial to a good Evo 6. <laughs> anyway, boys. See you again next week for some more automation and let's all pray that my voice comes back because i would love to uh, not be this raspy in the next one <laughs> peace all right it's time to thank those who have chosen to support this channel an extra crispy shout out for you guys today as my voice is now toast after over two hours of this but we got overlord qt bear terry 01 j a pope davis heister the german dude nat 64 sin lab goofy plays badger Phoenix Shark and Baja Blast. If you want to join this crew, the join button is there for you. And I actually need to do a little bit of changing up the join button because I want to add something cool. Advanced supporters should hopefully soon be able to watch my videos without ads, but we'll see how that works. I got to get into the uh, back end of YouTube here and figure it out. But uh, yeah, they added some more perks, so I'll add some stuff for you. I am not trying to skimp on you, so <laughs> yeah, guys. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.